Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Sound Design for Video Games. Today we're going to be creating a convincing tire skid sound. Let's hear what it's going to sound like. So you can hear it there. So I can usually get a good one going into the tunnel, so let's go there and give it a go. Here we are inside of Cubase and as you can see here I've got a whole load of tyre screech recordings and I'll give you a quick listen to what they sound like. But the question you're probably asking is well what is it that actually makes that sound? Believe it or not what makes that sound is a hot water bottle. What you do is you fill it up with air instead of water. You might be thinking well how do I fill up a hot water bottle with air? Very simple just open it up and it'll naturally suck in the air, squeeze the end of it so that it can't get out and then close it up. Once you've closed it up, it'll be filled up with air and what you want to do is you want to scrape it against a smooth surface. For instance, this table right now, it is perfect for that. So if you have something like a smooth wood, you scrape that hot water bottle across it, it'll make a nice tire screech sound. Now once you've gone away and you've got a whole bunch of recordings, you're going to want to edit it so that essentially what you have is a start, a loop, and then optionally an end. You don't necessarily need an end, but you can do one if you want. So I'll show you what that sounds like now. So what you have is the end, sorry, the start of the tire screech sound, which sounds like this. Then you have a loop, which sounds like this. And it will loop back around, like so. And then once again, optionally, you can also have an end like that. So to show you how I created that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right now live create a start, loop and end just to show you the different techniques that I used. So firstly, let's go find a nice start. So I'm just going to pick this one first, uh, pick the snap to zero if you have that inside of your DAW. I'm just going to chop what I can visibly see as the start of this sound, so I'm just looking at these spikes. And you can see round about here it starts to transform into something else, so I'm just going to take up to there I would say. Press Control C, Control V, where's that ended up? I think it's ended up over here, right, so I'll just drag this across. And then I'm going to glue those back together. Now what I need is a loop. So I can essentially go ahead and grab maybe here, up to about there, and I'll press Control C, Control V, and then glue this back together again. Now that loop would be quite short and you will be able to hear that this will repeat. Let me just mute that for a minute. So you can hear that's repeating quite easily. At the moment that's panned over to the left because it's a tire screech left sound. Now what you'll need to do is you'll need to go and find other middle sections in these sounds which will go well with that one. So I'm looking at this one here maybe. That'll work quite nicely. So let's go and pair that on the end with this one. Now one thing you can do to an extend a loop, what we can do is we can press Control D on Cubase and then with this selected I can highlight it like so. And then if I go to Audio, Process, I can actually reverse this. Let's say it's a new version. So what that's doing is it's basically reversed the audio, so it's playing the start here then it goes to the end and then rather than playing the start again it's going to play the end reversed to the start here and this is what the loop will sound like now. Let me just mute that and I'll pan this left channel to the centre. Now 
So that's one way of extending that loop. Now what we can do is we can tag this on the end of it here. And let's just sort of put it like here and then I'm going to press X to crossfade it. In fact, before I do that, let's extend this loop, shall we? So I'm going to do that, press Control D and do exactly the same thing. Highlight that and then press on the reverse button. So we'll go new version again. So we have a whole other loop that we've created now and we're just going to tag that on the end here. And you can kind of do this sort of forever if you wanted to and make a really massive loop, but I'm just going to make a short one just for now for demonstration purposes. So for now that'll be fine. If you can still hear it looping and you're worried about the player hearing it looping, just make it a bit longer and the longer you make it the less likely it is that the player will hear that as a loop. And then finally what we're going to want to do is we're going to want our little ending. Now like I said this is completely optional. I ended up not even using an ending but I'm just going to go ahead and grab this one. And pop it on the end here. So there you go, there's your start, your loop and your end. Now what I ended up doing was creating a left and right so that what we had was a stereo sample of that sound. There's the loop and then here's the end. So to get it to line up the way that I have here, you can see all these are perfectly the same length. What you do have to do is a little bit of trickery using time stretching. Now in Cubase that's really simple, so let me just show you really quickly how I did that. So let's say this is a start sample that I want for the right side of the channel. And I'll cut it the wrong length, because inevitably they're going to be all different lengths. And I'll pop that on the end here. It's actually really, really close, so I'm just going to chop this a little bit to make it shorter. So you might end up with a situation like this. I'm just going to line it perfectly up with the stars. Well, you've got this gap here, so when you listen to this on the left right channel, it's going to be quite annoying because you can hear the right side all of a sudden cut out. Doesn't sound too bad, but let's make it perfect. So one way to do it is to make it so that your low cases are perfectly the length of this piece of audio. Once that's the case, you can use your range selection tool, double click this, go to audio, process, and if you go to time stretch now, there's an option which says use locators. So that's going to look at these locators here and it'll figure out how much it needs to, to time stretch it to make this audio the exact same length as this audio. So it's very useful. Let's click process and try it out. So now it's exactly the same length, so that's perfect, that's what we want. Perfect. The other thing you can do is experiment with pitch shifting. That might help you get closer to the result you're hearing in your head. So if I click process, go to the pitch shift function here. And in Cubase, there's a lot of different presets that you can use. Typically speaking, the further down this list you go, the more processing power you need. Um, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to yield better results than one um, algorithm over the other. So let's take a look at these. What do we want to go for? I think a poly, I think a poly complex format will actually be the best results here. And I'll just set this semitone back to zero and we'll preview it. Let's move it down maybe three semitones. And let's move it up, maybe three semitones. So I'd recommend experimenting with that and just listening to what gets you closest to the type of sound that you're going for. Now, once you've done all that, export all those individual pieces out and import them into Unreal Engine. What you can see here is I have three individual start sounds. I have three loop sounds and I have three end sounds. I'll show you what they sound like now. Here's the loops. 
and then we have some ends which like I said I didn't end up using anyway so that's it you should have them all imported in and ready for next episode so I'd like to say thank you very much for watching I'll catch you next time